So we're going to talk about a letter that Apostle Paul wrote to Timothy. Apostle Paul and Timothy had a really good relationship. Their relationship um, came about because of their faith in God. Apostle Paul called Timothy his spiritual son. And Timothy also said that Apostle Paul was his spiritual father. Their closeness that they had was because they shared the same love for God. And they did ministry together. They walked together. And Apostle Paul had the privilege of watching Timothy develop in the faith. Um, the letter that he wrote, he wrote with some urgency. Timothy had been assigned to lead a church in Ephesus. And at the time, everything was going crazy inside the church. There was a problem with the doctrine, uh, false teachers, worship. And so Apostle Paul knew that there was an urge for him to send this letter to Timothy because they needed to get some order within the church. Souls were at stake. When false teachers enter and the doctrine is altered, that means the church was in critical condition. So we're going to read it's 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 through 5. And I'm reading from the ESV. Now the Spirit expressly says that in later times some will depart from the faith by devoting themselves to deceitful spirits and teachings of demons. Through the insincerity of liars whose consciences are seared, who forbid marriage and require abstinence from food that God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believed and know the truth. For everything created by God is good and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving. For it is made holy by the word of God and prayer. Now, this letter was interesting to me because Paul, to me, he was writing with authority. And like I said, there was some urgency. There was an issue. And when he begins in, in verse 1, it says, now the Spirit expressly said. What that tells us is that Apostle Paul had a very intimate relationship with our triune Father. Meaning that he knew that God was God, he knew that he was Lord, and he knew that he also was Holy Spirit. He knew that he was serving a triune Father. Because in order to even write a letter and to put this in there, you have to have a divine, you have to be connected to God in order to receive this type of revelation. You can receive a revelation if you don't have divine intimacy. So what he was speaking about, he knew that it was true. This was serious. And another thing about it is that Jesus himself talked about being led astray in Mark 13 and 5. Make sure you're not led astray. There were prophets of the old who also mentioned this same thing. So Paul's relationship with the Holy Spirit allowed him to write this letter to make sure that Timothy would be on point about what was going on. He needed a spiritual awakening in the church. So it says, now the Spirit expressly says that in later times that some will depart from the faith. In order to depart from something, that means you had to be connected in some way. Had fellowship. Maybe the attendant, you know, they came to church. They were a part. This was an issue in the church, so they were a part of the church some way, somehow. And so the Spirit says that some will depart. Then it goes in and says, by devoting themselves to deceitful spirits and the teachings of demons. Devoted themselves, which means that God did not push them away. This was something that they did on their own. We all have a choice, and they had a choice. Either you submit to God's divine bloodline, or you submit to the natural bloodline, which is always seeking for selfish desires. So they had a choice. Devoted themselves to deceitful spirits. So this was urgent. This was a problem. And Paul being connected to God, having that deep, intimate relationship, he knew that I need to get this letter to Timothy 
because souls are at stake. And it's the same way that we should be in the body of Christ. We should be concerned about souls. We shouldn't want anyone to depart from the faith. Deceitful spirits. What is a deceitful spirit? A deceitful spirit is a spirit that is not of God. A deceitful spirit, it comes on and the deceitful spirit's intentions is to steal, to kill, destroy, confuse. But see, a deceitful spirit can't do anything unless it has a body. Deceitful spirit, meaning it can come in the form of somebody you know very well. It can come in the form of your boss. It can come in the form of someone in your home. Because what happens is if anyone leaves a gate open, if anyone is vulnerable, and, and it always waits for a time where someone's down. When we lose somebody, you lose a job, my marriage is jacked up. We just got a divorce. Or somebody left, my kids are acting up, I lost my child. It, it waits for an opportune time to sneak in. That's why it's deceitful. Because truthfully, if it came with some horns and floating around, we would know what it was and we would run. So deceitful means it has to come as an imposter. Deceitful spirits. We have to understand what a deceitful spirit is. Because, or if we don't, we will play ourselves. Because it's said that they devoted themselves. This isn't God's doing. So we need to know what deceitful spirits are. And then it says, and also to the teachings of demons, of, uh, let's see, I'm sorry, uh, the teaching of demons. I'm like, teaching of demons? Paul, this letter to me, it was a hot letter. He was writing some stuff to Timothy because this is serious. The teaching of demons. What is that? Now, we talked about what deceitful spirits are, the teaching of demons. This teaching is a teaching that draws you away from God. Opposition, anything that pulls you away to disguise you from God's truth. What it does, it always satisfies the flesh to a certain extent, but then it'll put a little bit of God in it. So you'll think you're okay. And this is how they got into the church. They was talking about God, all right. But you got to listen real close. Because, see, if you don't spend time with the one and only true living God, then the, the, the fake can slip right in. Demonic teaching. It always wants to satisfy a piece of the old in you because it wants to hold you as a slave forever. It doesn't want you to come out of bondage. So it's going to continue to satisfy that craving that you have that's connecting you to the world. But then you look as if you're holy, but you're not. So it says, and this was through the insincerity of liars. That means a professional liar. That means that 99.999 percent of the was true but then it's that little piece and that's how slick the demonic teaching and deceitful spirits are because it can be a punctuation mark that'll set you off it can be a period when it was supposed to continue so you got to be careful through insincerity of liars meaning they're very good at it they practice this Through the insincerity of liars whose consciences are seared. Yeah. 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 Seared. This means, when we think of it, as some translation mentions a hot iron. Yeah. You know, so the flesh was burned to the point yeah. that it was numb and the flesh was deadened. This is their conscience. This means they no longer have the capability 
to know right from wrong, nor do they care at this point. We have to be careful of the imposters. It's time for us to be spiritually awakened. We have to be spiritually awakened so that we can know how to fight, how to teach our loved ones. One thing about Apostle Paul was that he knew God was God. There's no way he even would have went through that conversion if a piece of God wasn't true. Who forbid marriage and requires abstinence from food? This is a huge issue, and, and it's still connected to the, the demonic teaching because it wants to tell you that you can't have this, you can't do that. Demonic teaching is also very religious. You know, all these rules. It wants to keep us away from the things that God said that we can have. Which makes us think about even in Genesis, when God was blessing no one, he told him, I'm giving you the food, I'm giving you the green plants. It is not okay for anyone at any time to restrict us from the things that God has allowed. Everything that God created, God created to be received through thanksgiving. But then it says, by those who believe and know the truth. A spiritual awakening. What we need to do is that we really have to understand and truly believe that God is triune. God the Father, God the Son, and God Holy Spirit. See, the problem with, with the imposters is that they'll walk around with a form of godliness. And it says this in 2 Peter 3. You walk around with a form of godliness, but then you deny its power. So with the world, I'm sure what they were doing then and what they're doing now is people are okay with God. Everybody, we believe in God. Some of them are even okay with Jesus. But then that's where it gets tricky because some don't believe that he really came in the wound of a woman. Some don't believe that he really laid his head down. And some don't believe he got up. And so when we talk about the Holy Spirit, they really tripping on that. But if we don't really understand and we don't submit ourselves to the Holy Spirit, we can be deceived. Because what Paul was addressing in his letter, that had happened. This is real. But if we walk around denying the power of God, if we deny that the Holy Spirit is really God, if we deny who he is as a person, everybody's easily deceived. And when you really understand who the Holy Spirit truly is, it, it truly transforms you like Apostle Paul. See, if you was half-stepping, you wouldn't have wrote a letter like this. He's concerned about souls because he really knows who Jesus is and what the power does to you and how it transforms you. So he doesn't want anybody to be left behind. For everything created by God is good and nothing is to be rejected if it is received through thanksgiving. For it is made holy by the word of of God in prayer. I wanted to know as I just continued on reading and I'm like Paul just was writing this and this is this is serious. And I thought about how Timothy must have even felt to receive a letter like this. Being young, the leader of a church. How do I stand? I'm sure he wanted to run away. And I'm sure at times some of us want to run away because it gets that hot. But there's no way that we can continue to serve God at this level if we remain right here. Everything that we need to witness, to love, God has placed it within us. And when we truly receive God, then we will receive all that he's given us through thanksgiving. For it was made holy by the word of God. Holy by the word of God and prayer. What happens when we really truly believe and truly really walk 
through the Holy Spirit. Everything around us will change. The church will change. And not just inside this building where we worship, but we, we are the church. So are we effective on our job site? Are we effective? And what the Lord showed me was that we're effective, but only to a certain point. And the reason why is because we want to hold on. We want to hold on. We don't want to tell the deceitful spirits that that's not of God because we don't want to lose our job. We're not desperate enough for what God has done for us. We are not desperate enough for what God has done for us. We need to be spiritually awakened because this is happening. And if we love our children and we love our families, we need to teach them this. We have to teach them that God is triune. We say serve a triune father. And we need to understand that. My daughter's been having an incident. She's in college and she's just been having, I mean, the craziest things happen to her. And for over the last year, I've been telling her, Sianna, you, you've got to get to know the Holy Spirit. You know, I want to come in and, and, you know, set up and tell people off. But what God showed me is, baby, you carried her as far as you can carry her. I got to teach my babies about deceitful spirits. I got to let them know the truth and trust that the Holy Spirit will, will change them and, and will strengthen them and will guard them. Because what, what Apostle Paul is saying is that we need to be guarded. The only way that we can guard ourselves and guard our family is through the Holy Spirit. But do we really want to change? Because that's what he's going to do. Do you really want to change? So the thing is, is with my daughter, it hurt me because she has been multiple times that people have came up to her and asked her things or questioned her about her faith. And it bothered me for a really long time. But when she had this situation that happened to her and she was like just terrified, she said, Mom, I just can't believe this. And when she told me her response I love the Lord. I tell you, I love the Lord because the Lord showed up in her and she was able to defend her faith, contend for the faith, and didn't waver. Amen. To live our lives guarded means we have to be completely all the time yielded to the Holy Spirit. And what lets me know this is I thought about Jesus when he was... Uh, him and Peter, he was letting them know about, you know, I got to go. This is what I got to do. And Peter, you know, he went back to his gangster mode. He's like, no, you don't. He wanted to get it, you know. No, Lord, you don't got to do this. But Jesus looked, Satan, get thee behind me. Do you get what I'm saying? So you can be walking with somebody. It's that easy to slip into the flesh and go against God. It's that quick. And we got to know that. It can happen at any time, any time that we're vulnerable, any time that we allow ourselves to be connected to the natural bloodline, it's always against God. So when we talk about deceitful spirits, for a while I was like, these deceitful spirits and I'm talking stuff. But then God said, your flesh without me is deceitful. You get what I'm saying? So this is the reason why we have to be holy, cautious, holy, cautious. It's because our flesh ungoverned by God, it will grab, it grabs lies. It grabs things to, to, to cater to the flesh. Demonic teaching. He said, and you done done that too. Because when you was telling people just a piece of me, when you was telling people just a part of your testimony, you was denying me. We've only been saved to give the full truth to everybody. And when you know that you're guarded by the Holy Spirit, you ain't scared to tell them. And you ain't scared to go. The things that God has been allowing me to do, it's, it's not for show. It's because it's the only reason why he saved me. It's the only reason why he came to get me. So when I'm going out there and I'm doing what he's called me to do, I just trust that I'm guarded by the Holy Spirit. 
Because now I got a relationship with him. It's called a knowing relationship. It's steady. It keeps increasing because I continue to relinquish myself and give myself to him. What Apostle Paul wanted the church to know while he was writing this letter to Timothy was guard yourself. Wake up. A spiritual awakening. It's time out for the Rudy Pooch servant. We only want to do a little bit because we don't want the pressure. What God did for us, he didn't do it in secret. He didn't do it in secret. When he went on that cross, it was in front of everybody. But then we don't want to go tell nobody that he's triune. We don't want to tell nobody that the Holy Spirit is real because we're afraid what they're going to say. You better tell it. Or guess what? You an imposter. So I'm thankful for who God is. It's time for us to take a stand. Like I said, what God did for us, he didn't do in secret. He didn't go in a dark room. He didn't let him put him in a cave. This urgency that Apostle Paul had when he wrote this letter is the same urgency that we should have every single day. You know, people ask me, why are you so hyped? What? Because you, you don't know me. You don't know where I was. But I'm hyped for God. I don't ever want the fire to go out. No matter how hard it is, no matter what I got to lose, I got the urgency of the Holy Spirit in me, and that's why I'm moving the way I'm moving. We need to live our lives submitted to the Holy Spirit, completely yielding unto him. See, the thing is, is that our conversion, Holy Spirit came in, but he only is activated when you yield. He ain't about to fight with you, but you got to yield to him. So when you wonder why so-and-so is doing this and why they're doing that, yield to him. Yield to him. Yield to Holy Spirit. Yield to him. And we will be his witnesses yeah. to the ends of the earth. Yeah. Yield to him. So I'm very thankful. I was trying to get away from talking about this. I was trying to get away from it. I didn't get no sleep. And every time the Lord woke me up, it was another passage. I said, I didn't know you talked about this so much in the Bible. But he let me know that this is it's urgent, baby. And I trust you with it. But you got to give it to him. I got to give it to you. So I'm giving you exactly what he gave me. We need to be spiritually awakened. We got to wake up. We have got to change the way that we move in the earth realm. If we care about our loved ones, if you care about your children, if you care about the souls like Apostle Paul did, we have got to tell the truth. So I'm very thankful for today because through God, I am able to stand and to talk about the things that had me trapped for so long. I'm just super excited about the Holy Spirit because a couple of, it was some months back, I was going through and the Lord told me, you're serving me. But in order to go on, more is required. And I remember crying, and it was weeks. I'm crying, and I'm talking to the Lord. And that's when he told me, you got to submit. I'm like, I don't submit it to you. But it was to the Holy Spirit. The problem that I had, it was certain pieces about him that I really didn't get. You get what I'm saying? But in order to serve God, in order... To do divine works. We have to have divine power. And the divine power only comes from Holy Spirit. And so I said, I, I need to know you. I need to know you. And I'm crying and I'm crying. I'm at work. I'm walking off. And so I'm getting ready to go home. And I'm driving. And it was really weird because it was snowing outside at the time. And I'm thinking, I'm okay. It's not, you know, much snow. 
and I'm driving and I turn out and my vehicle starts spinning around and I'm like, and I'm so scared. I was so scared and I locked up. I didn't say anything at all. And he said, call on me. And I said, Holy Spirit. And do you know I'm facing ongoing traffic? It's a busy, busy street. I'm talking about hundreds of cars coming, coming, coming. But when that happened, but when I called on him, the car stopped. And it was as if his hand went out like this. But I'm looking and I'm like, why are these cars coming? I can see their headlights. But then he picked me up and took me on the other side of the road. And do you know hundreds of cars start coming full speed? And right then and there, for the first time in my entire life, I said, Holy Spirit, I'm sorry for quench. I hurt you. I resisted you. Because, see, I, I said I was serving you, and I believed that God was triune, but I didn't. Not all the way. It wasn't a full acceptance. You get what I'm saying? And so what I did for the very first time is I apologized to the Holy Spirit. Because you are real. You are real. You are real. And he showed me that because I kept praying and crying. I know I couldn't do it. And when he told me, you can't. So if you want to serve God the way that he's called you to serve him, submit to the Holy Spirit. Yield to him every single day, all day long. That's the only reason why you're here. It's the only reason why I'm here. God did not release us into the earth realm to sit down and be quiet. He released us into the earth realm to start up some stuff. He got us in the earth realm so that we can preach and teach. He called us for that reason alone. So I'm thankful. This Thanksgiving has been different. This year I didn't cook no food. And I ain't mad about it. Um... You know, because it's about, it's about getting out here doing God's work. I've been doing so much for the Lord, I, I didn't even go to the store for myself. But I'm, I'm, I'm happy about that because this is what it's about. I don't want anybody, the same urgency that Apostle Paul had then, I got. I don't want nobody to depart from the faith. I don't want nobody to depart from the faith. So I'm going to pray. God's leading me to pray. Can we all stand up? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 Jesus. Hallelujah, Father God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Heavenly Father, Father God, I come this evening, Lord Jesus. And Father God, we thank you, Father God, for your word. We thank you for submitting yourself, Father God, to your own plan, Lord Jesus, to save us, Lord. Father, I ask that tonight, Father God, that what you've allowed us to hear, Lord Jesus, Father God, that you will just pierce it inside of us, Jesus, that we never forget it, Lord. Father God, we thank you for this season. We thank you for this season, Lord Jesus. We thank you for this divine opportunity, Father God, to be here, Father God. In your mighty name, Jesus, we thank you and we praise you. Amen.